Welcome to MX Graph Made Simple. Today we're going to learn about photos and grouping. First I want to show you a little bit about the data we're going to be working with and I'm going to be showing it to you inside of a Python script because I'm using Python to write the XML which is really much more important than the Python for our uses. Uh, but nonetheless, this is where the data is, so I'm going to show it to you in the Python, as well as a couple other changes we're going to make in the Python. Firstly, our data today represents a dog show called Mutts and Mongrels, and it will be happening on June 10th, 2045, so we're doing this well in advance, uh, and it's happening in Snootshire Fancy Place. Um, now, in this dog show, we're going to have three different breeds. Uh, each breed has an ID, as well as the name of the breed, and an image that is associated with that breed, as well as the time that they're going to be shown. And finally, we have nine dogs, three dogs for each breed. Each dog has an ID, as well as the breed ID, and the name of the dog, and the name of the owner you'll notice the names of the owners represent both the right and the left of talk radio as well as the classical station now let's take a look at what this data looks like currently and there you have it we've got one very large square which represents the show we have three smaller squares which represent the breeds and we have nine much smaller vertices which represent the individual dogs now this is obviously a tremendous mess so we're going to see what we can do to visually represent our data uh, much nicer and in a way that's meaningful to the people who are looking at it. Let's start by grouping together the dogs inside of their breeds. There are much more elaborate uses of the groupings than we're going to see today. But today we're simply going to group them together by changing their parents. So right now, the parent of all of the vertices is number one, vertex number one. But now what we're going to do is we're going to make the parent of the breeds to be the show and the parent of each individual dog to be the breed. Now once again you're seeing it inside of the Python which is not that important. What's more important is the way that would look in the XML but I'm not going to show that to you right now to keep this short. I am however going to need to run the Python and let's take a look at what our data looks like. Well, it hasn't changed all that much, but what has changed is that when we drag any one of the breeds, it takes together with it all three of the dogs that are found within that breed because now they're all grouped together. The next thing we want to do is to add images. This is going to be a two-part process because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the style of the default vertex and we're going to change the shape style so that from now on the shapes are images. So we do that as we've seen in previous lessons by making a variable called style, uh, which is going to be the graph get style sheet get default vertex style. 
And then uh, on that new variable, we're going to change the MX constants dot style shape to be MX constants dot shape image. That means that every vertex now is going to be represented by an image. As it turns out, only three of our vertices actually have images associated with them. That means that all that's going to be left of the other vertices are going to be their text. Now the second thing we're going to do is in the Python we're going to change the script so that the new XML will include within it the icon images. And the way we do that right here is we're going to add a style and the style is going to be called icon and the image for that icon is going to be equal to breed number two which I will be showing you what that looks like in one second. This XML now has MXL ID breed parent show one style icon image equals and then the address of our image. And let's see what this looks like actually represented in the HTML. And there we go. Now each one of our breeds is represented by an image. Everything is still a major mess, but we can see now that the Husky is at 9 a.m., the Irish Wolfhound is at 11 a.m., and the Collie is at 10 a.m. Now the next thing I want to do is to lay out each one of the dogs appropriately inside of its breed. As it stands now, all three dogs are on top of each other, which uh, we typically call a dog fight. The way we're going to do that is in our HTML file. We're going to set up layouts. And each one of these layouts is going to be a stack layout, which basically stacks one item on top of the other. And the way we do that is by creating a variable called layout, which is a new MX stack layout, and that is going to be appended to the graph. We're going to space between each one of the items 10. We're going to give it an X coordinate of 160. This will keep it off of the image because the image is 150. And let's take a look at what this looks like. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to need to execute the layout. There you go. So our huskies are now laid out with the three dogs uh, separated one from the other. Now my preference is to have them one on top of the other, not to be running horizontally. In order to do that, we're going to have to go back to our HTML. And we're going to have to set the horizontal to false. I'm also going to change the resize parent to false. This will make sure that our original cell remains a constant state, a constant size. Let's take a look at it. There we go. That's how I want it to look. Although we're not completely there yet. Firstly, we need to do the exact same thing for each of the three breeds. There is a way to do it programmatically. I have to admit I took the lazy shortcut. And I simply copied and pasted. Now I forgot to point out to you that in our layout.execute, we have to execute our layout on a specific cell or specific group. The way we do this is by writing layout.execute graph dot 
get model dot get cell and the name of the cell that we want to apply the layout to. And we're going to do that for all three of our breeds. There we go. Now each one of our breeds are a little bit better represented. Now let's do the same thing for our breeds so that our breeds are not on top of each other. Using the exact same stack layout. Except this one, we're not only going to have an X position, we're going to have a Y position as well. And that is to give us some space for the title of the show. There you go. Now we're still a little bit stuck because the title of our show is all the way at the bottom of the page. But we'll deal with that a little bit later. The next thing I'd like to do is to change the font sizes. And we're going to do that in our style so that MX constants dot style font size is going to be 30. I'd also like to have all of the labels be aligned to the left. And the way we do that is by style MX constants style align MX constants align left. Let's take a look at what it looks like now. Much nicer. However, the name of each of the breeds is sitting on top of its parent, making it completely illegible. I want to put that at the bottom of each of the vertices. The way we do that is by changing the style vertical label position. We're going to do it for all of the vertices because it's not going to make that much difference as far as we're concerned. And in the vertical label position, we're going to put a line bottom, MX constants dot align bottom. And that's going to create a little box on the bottom of our image. And within that box, we want the text to be aligned to the top. And that's going to be done in MX constants dot style vertical align. Let's see what it looks like now. Much better. We're almost there. So now we have Huskies at 9 a.m. We have the dog's name, the owner's name. Uh, and each one of these is grouped together. So if I move them, for example, they all move together. You should know, however, that if you move one of the elements of the group, it actually takes it out of the group. Now let's get this title to go all the way to the top. In order to do that, we're going to have to touch that cell individually. There's a number of ways to do it. I'm going to put it into my Python script, which is then going to make a difference in the XML script. And what I'm going to do is add a style element to the show and I'm going to change the label the vertical label position to equal middle and the vertical align to equal top let's see how it looks now first we'll run the Python awesome the final thing I want to do is to make these vertices foldable. And we're going to do that once again inside of the HTML. When I say inside of the HTML, obviously I'm actually talking about inside of the JavaScript, which is inside of the HTML. But it's an HTML file. And in our style, we're going to make the MX constants style foldable equal 1, which is a Boolean for yes. Let's see what happens. Nothing is happening visually, but now if I go to the top left corner, 
I can actually fold each one of these. Now, if I want it to be a little fancier, I would make a little uh, icon where it should be folded. And we can, of course, unfold them. I think you get the point now. We've learned about representing vertices as images, as well as um, grouping items together, and then playing around with some of the styling uh, for those groups. I just want to show you one more trick that David Benson, the co-creator of MX Graph, as well as an excellent resource and very helpful individual, showed me, which is that if you want to figure out the XML of any specific layout, the best way is to go to their www.draw.io and then you create something that looks roughly like what you would like it to look like and by simply going to file edit you will get the XML representation I cannot tell you how many hours I tried to figure out XML representations getting them wrong almost every single time and now again thank you very much to the help of David Benson for uh, pointing this out this saves a tremendous amount of time and energy and this will show you exactly the XML representation of whatever it is you're trying to achieve